Right, this is um, a quarter size sheet of Arsh um, 140 pound watercolour paper. It's um, a knot surface, so it's sort of halfway between rough and smooth. And I'm going to do this little scene of a lane uh, just down the road from us in, in the village where I live. Uh, I've turned the paper the other way to do the sky first and this is just to encourage the, the paint to run down the paper rather than going that way. So I'm using um, a large uh, squirrel brush. This is a size 3 Winsor & Newton Pure Squirrel and I'm liberally wetting the sky area, just putting plenty of water on there, really soaking the paper. I've squeezed out my um, Sennelier watercolours and the first thing I'm going to do is pick up Naples Yellow and start to prepare that in the palette. We want a, a reasonably strong mix because um, there's a lot of water on the surface and just, just pull that down into the lower horizon. The, um, the next thing I'm going to do is bring out some French Vermilion. You have to be just a little bit more sparing with this one because when you dip the brush in you can pick a lot of colour and this is to give us a lovely wintry sky. The next stage is uh, to add French Ultramarine Blue and we want a, a good amount of this so I'm putting this into the French Vermilion and literally just painting down. As I paint down the, the brush just runs out of paint so you get this lovely gradation and then in the lower part of the sky I'm just going to flick in some French Ultramarine Blue that's got a lot more French Vermilion in it so it gives it more of a violety colour. There is a, a line of fencing down here and I'm just going to very quickly indicate the negative shapes of that with the brush and just finish off around here. We've got a little house here, this is the, um, the mill house in the village and just bring that out. All I need to do now is just um, sit back and let that dry and then I'll progress onto the, um, onto the rest of the painting. Okay, so I've left the um, painting for half an hour or so now and it's, it's bone dry so I can now start working on the top to complete this little watercolour of a, a country lane. Here's the um, original photograph and um, that's what I'm going to be working from. So the next step is to re-wet the sky area. I'm going to re-wet it with um, an atomizer um, rather than a brush because if you start rubbing a brush over the surface it's going to start lifting the paint that's already been applied. So that's got it nice and damp and I'm just going to get a round nylon brush and actually mix some colours for the background trees. Uh, we want to do the trees that are the farthest away first so I'm going to mix up a violet using French Ultramarine Blue and French Vermilion and literally just use the side of the brush just to test the surface to make sure that uh, I've got a little bit of control over it. The um, By spraying it with the atomizer it, it just uh, gives a little bit of softness to the edges of the trees but I still have to work reasonably quickly otherwise it's going to all start to dry on me. I've got this little band of trees that come down here and I'll paint those either side of the farmhouse. I've got another line of trees here. This is one of the probably one of the furthest trees away in, in the distance. And then as they come towards us, we want to just make them a slightly different colour. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre into that mix just to make it a sort of greeny grey and then start to add the nearer trees as well just using the side of the brush and putting a little bit of information into the sky holes. Paint 
paint those down to the pants. And then as we get back further away from us, uh, I need to revert back to that sort of uh, violety blue colour. And then we've got this line of trees here. So the, this, at this stage I'm painting everything that's the furthest away. You have to move reasonably quickly to take advantage of the, uh, the wet paper. Right, the next thing to do now is to add the uh, hedgerow uh, that's running along there. So I'm going to mix a stronger mix now using um, Venetian red, which is a brown, and Van Dyke brown. This is to give a nice strong colour. Put some blue in there as well. And this should give us our nearer hedgerow. Just following the edge of the field down there. This part of the paper surface is quite dry, so I can um, make some nice sharp edged marks with the small squirrel brush and then as we come a little bit further up the hedge I can swap to a, a yellow ochre and let that just run in as well hopefully that will touch the wet painting above where I've um, painted the trees previously that's nice and wet now, so we can afford just to feed in some more colour. This will start to run up the painting and it'll add a little bit of darkness for the, um, the base of the hedge. There are some little bits just here on the right, which I'm going to add in using a mixture of yellow ochre and the, the grey that I painted the trees with previously. There's a little white gate there, so I'm going to carefully paint around that. So that's got the hedgerow in there. Uh, as that's starting to dry, I'm going to use um, an alcohol spray and just spray a little bit of that into it and that'll allow the colours just to break up a little bit. Uh, if you go in too soon, um, it doesn't separate out, which I think I've probably done there. So um, we'll leave that for a few moments and see how that settles down and I'll start to get the, the three main trees in here at the end of the lane. So I'm mixing up um, yellow ochre, a bit of primary yellow, French ultramarine blue to make a nice dark green and hopefully we'll get a, a little bit of bleed here as we put that into the painting. That's a little bit too diluted so I'm going to make a stronger mix of those same colours. Let me push that in. What I want is a nice soft uh, trunk to the trees because we've got ivy growing up them we want them uh, just to bleed out into the wet wash and um, give that nice soft effect so now I can progress on to um, adding the, um, the branches to the trees again I'm using a a, a round nylon brush and I'm going to start painting in the, the structure of the tree.
you don't have to put every branch in but we'll put quite a few in here just to start to get the shape of the um, of the trees when I paint the branches I, I paint them in a I bring the brush down in a curve like so so that it just touches the paper as you bring it into contact that way you get some nice fine marks as you apply them I generally paint down into the tree and that allows a lot of those uh, colors to run down into the main part of the structure so what we want now is a, an overall wash over the top of the tree to unite all the um, branches and just suggest some of the finer parts of the structure so just using the side of the brush and painting in the um, the canopy of the tree this is using yellow ochre and a little bit of Venetian red and while that's still damp I can paint more branches into that wash and they should dissolve into the um, into the wet paint These branches from these large trees do spread quite a long way. Um, it's surprising how much a large mature tree's canopy will spread through a painting. So don't be afraid to um, run those branches out into the painting. I'm not slavishly painting every branch as I see it. I'm just roughly looking at the shape of the tree and then adding structure in for that so I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and work lower down on the um, on the painting fortunately this part's still wet so I can um, add some little washes of paint this is literally um, just a dirty wash out of the palette I've mixed all my colors together and I'm painting those into the wet wash and allowing those to diffuse through the painting. I'm going to take a little bit of tissue now and I'm going to roll this up into a sausage and run that along the top of the hedge I want to just trap a little bit of light there just as if the snow has settled onto the top of the hedgerow there and just put a few more darks into this part of the painting and then I can come back to that in a little while and uh, do a bit more to it the um, the fence on the right, uh, a lot of that is painted uh, just by painting in the negative spaces, the gaps in the fence. This is um, quite useful, you get more of a, an abstract um, vision of the fence when you start to work this way rather than trying to do all the positive shapes. Of the fence first. We can always work over the top of that in a little while to build that up more. Uh, the line of posts running into the foreground, we'll get those in next. I generally like to add a little bit of dark to the top of my posts. So 
So I'm mixing up uh, Venetian red, French ultramarine blue, and I'm just popping a little bit of that on the top side of the post and just allowing that to, to run down. Sometimes it needs just a little bit of persuasion with the brush. But that gives quite a nice effect there. Uh, we need to start to just indicate the um, foreground now. So I'm mixing up French ultramarine blue. I'm just mixing up French ultramarine blue and a little bit of French vermilion to make a sort of violety blue colour. And we're going to start adding in some tones for the, the track that's um, running down there. Put some of the little bits in here. Generally if you're doing a snow scene you're relying on very much on the the whiteness of the paper. So um, I'm going to build a few marks up there. It's generally if there are um, ruts in the road like that you can often see the um, soil where the vehicle's been down exposed the ground so I'm just putting a little bit of yellow ochre in there too just to indicate that and so now I just need a little bit of dark so this is Venetian red and French ultramarine blue and I'm just pushing that into the edge of some of these marks because if the light's coming from the um, left hand side it's going to cast just a little bit of a shadow on that part of the painting Right, we can start adding a bit more to the uh, to the fence now. So I'm actually painting in the rails and the posts with a, a mixture of yellow ochre and French ultramarine blue. This is giving a, a nice sort of greeny grey colour. And I think we're probably dry enough there just to come back and add just a little bit more information onto this part of the painting. So I'm, I want to bring some branches out from the tree a little bit lower down. That's still a little bit damp, but we can probably get away with that. No, I think it needs just leaving just a little bit longer. So I'll, I'll come back to that. So we want um, a shadow running down the painting next. So I've got my larger squirrel brush and I'm mixing French ultramarine blue and French vermilion to make a, a bluey grey. And I'm going to bring a shadow in from the left hand side. This is going to run down the painting and leave a few little gaps where the snow is still on the surface. As we get to the track, it's quite nice to let some of these marks run over the track and sort of describe the shape of the land as it moves over it. And we'll put some little whiz lines down there. This is um, just marks of maybe uh, pedestrians or anything else that could have potentially been down there. And I think that's just about everything. Uh, so that's my watercolour snow scene of um, this little lane um, in the village where I live.